So my book is called How the Hippies Saved Physics. It's a supposed to be kind of playful title. Um, and it's, it's looking at some really dramatic shifts within the physics profession that took place not so long ago in recent history. Uh, so I'm looking at mostly the 1970s. The shift uh, had to do with a real reversal in um, in priorities, in funding, in the structure for trying to do physics, to learn about the natural world in this country. Uh, and caught up in that shift were a bunch of um, sort of colorful, very smart, little eccentric characters. Many of them were, were sitting in the midst of this kind of um, uh, counterculture bloom in San Francisco. It was a time, uh, late 60s or into the early 1970s, of interest in all kinds of things that now many of us would call kind of occult, mind reading, you know, UFOs, that kind of stuff. Some were very skeptical about that, but still curious. Some were, at least for a while, very, um, one, you know, wondered if that really would pan out. And they, and they all wondered if there were connections between the deep mysteries of quantum theory they were so passionate about and some of these sort of wider flung phenomena. Uh, they were neither all in nor all out of sort of regular or mainstream physics. They had done PhDs in some of the nation's most prestigious departments. They knew how to calculate, they were very well trained, they'd published in the regular journals. They were real trained scientists and they were kind of on the margins, not really by their choice. I mean, they were kind of entering the field at a horrible time to get jobs. And so they were, in some sense, carving out an, an alternate path. It wasn't, it wasn't something called not physics, but it wasn't physics as it had been recognizable for at least the recent past. Uh, and they got really excited about some deep questions about quantum theory, uh, which nowadays we all agree are tremendously important to the field, the basis for whole new technologies and devices and all that, as well as sort of spurring philosophical questions, what's the world really made of, how does it work? Uh, the work that I do um, uh, myself in physics about cosmology, we're in this sort of golden age. We have satellites, multiple satellites with very fancy detectors that can measure all kinds of things, patterns that, uh, that existed in the early universe that have left a mark, literally an imprint on the sky today. And so puzzling through what why is there something rather than nothing, as some popular books out there um, broaching today? Or can we account for why there are clusters of stuff, huge conglomerations of galaxies in one place in the sky, and then huge voids somewhere else? What accounts for the structure that we see in the universe? And can we account for that using our most basic fundamental laws of nature that we otherwise can try to test in the laboratory? It's, it's, a, it's actually a wonderful time for cosmology these days. So.